It is a great day and I'm so very excited to be here today. Yes, today is an amazing day and we have a great artist on. Now, let me tell you about this artist. He's a real artist, like not like music art, but fine art. Like he can like paint. I am the queen of stick figures, but this gentleman, K.O. Sims, is the king and queen. Apparently they like him of Art. Welcome to the show, Mr. K.O. Sims. How you doing? Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, the pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. So let's go back a little bit because I always like to go back into, you know, in time and find out a little bit about my guests. You know, how did you know that this was going to be the path that you took, the artist, the fine art? I had a brother who came home one day when I was about six, seven years old with a painting that he had done in school. And it, I was so intrigued by it because it was a perspective painting and it looked like the people were coming off the page. Mm. And I've been involved with art and intrigued by it ever since. Wow. That is amazing. So it wasn't even you. It was your brother. That yes. You Spark. So once that happened, what did your first painting look like? I have to ask you because then it'll make me feel either worse or better. <laughs> I think the first thing I picked up was a purple colored marker mm. and started uh, uh, doing little drawings and little circles and, and making swans and looking in magazines for drawing contests uh, of, out of Minnesota. <laughs> My goodness. So I, I feel bad. Because I can't draw. <laughs> but, that's, <laughs> but that's okay because, you know, not everybody's meant for that path. So tell me about your journey from, from that point until your very first, like, official drawing. What was that like, that time of learning? That was the most enjoyable time. Um, obviously, my teacher started, began to see the ability that I had. Um, and invited me to do drawings and things for them in the first, second, and third grade, and continuously. Then I went on to go to a school in Delaware called Del Castle, and from Del Castle, I took commercial art, just excited to be in a uh, curriculum that said art. I paid no attention to the fact it said commercial. It mm -hmm. didn't teach you anything about really fine art. It gave you the fundamentals. It was more about graphics. This was all before the computer age. Uh, it taught you sign painting and lettering and all kinds of things, magazine layouts, cardboard design, textile printing, a little bit of everything. So it just gave you a roundabout. Then I graduated in 75, mm. uh, all eager to start using these talents. And uh, the interesting wow. thing about it is I was doing pen and ink drawings because my perspectives were so good. And I went to a gallery called Hardcastles. Okay. And this at this gallery in, in Delaware, Hardcastles had been open since the 1800s or so. Oh, wow. I took, in, took my little drawings in. And I kind of got laughed out of the place. They said, can't you see that we sell paintings here, not drawings? Oh. And so I didn't leave too dismayed. Uh, I left with a determination to start mastering watercolors, acrylics, uh, uh, pastels, and anything in color so that I didn't have to be confronted with that again. I hear you. I hear you. Wow. Wow. That, to me, is disheartening. I hate when that happens, you know, but it happens to the best of us. But let me tell you something, okay? So that right there that happened... That was the precursor to the King and Queen of Sweden in 1988, taking on one of your paintings. What was that like? In 1988, I was working for the, uh, in Delaware, the great Hotel DuPont. 
and I was constantly talking to the concierge about my abilities. And she was telling of the king and queen of Sweden coming to stay at the hotel uh, for the 350 year celebration uh, of the Swedes landing in Delaware. Mm. And I be began to tell her about, I had already done a hand and ink drawing of the uh, Fort Christina Park granite statue that, that was there that commemorated their landing. And she said, wow. oh, please, I would love to see it. And then the hotel purchased the print, had it framed and presented it to the King and Queen of Sweden oh uh, as one of their gifts when they came to visit. Oh, oh, uh, how, I mean, OK, so, I mean, you're there that I mean, how did that? I mean, I don't even know how to explain how I would feel if the King and Queen of Sweden liked my paintings, which probably won't ever happen. But just to say after that happened and you got to calm down a little bit, how did that feel afterwards? I, I began to realize that my work had left the uh, Delaware. And even though I had been turned away by a gallery for a pen and ink drawing, here was a chance for it to be honored and commemorated. And uh, it is my desire that and, and, and wish that I'm hoping that it's hanging exactly in their uh, castle because I have not the funds or the resources to get out there to visit that as of yet to find out if it's hanging in the in the castle. <laughs> but I was elated. That would be nice. Well, the king and queen of Sweden, huh? To see if your painting is still there hanging, that would be amazing. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like shy. I'll probably try to, you know, contact them and find out which kind of painting was it. Do you have a copy of it? I do, and I will upload it to my website. Um, it's actually of a, a, a pen and ink, black and white. It's a granite statue that just stands straight up and down, and it has the ship and a great big wave, and then it has symbols in the wave, uh, also in, inscriptions of the Indians. They're trading with the Indians. It's, it's a wonderful piece uh, done with cross-hatching, um, a little bit of everything, all the techniques that I had learned and wow. um, that it was recognized, you know, and the King, Car it was uh, King Carl Gustav, the, hmm, I think the 14th or 16th, 16th and Queen Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, we're going to have to get, you got to get that up on the website. We do have the link to the QR code in the corner over there. And definitely you guys can put your phones up there, use your camera, and it'll take you straight to the website. You can see that. And when he uploads that picture, hopefully the king and queen of Sweden is watching or someone who knows them. And then you guys, you know, make it, make it happen. Get in contact with K.O. Sims and let him know that his painting is probably still there. I, I think that would be kind of cool. I think, I could, you know what else I think is cool? That you used to run into Tyler Perry before Tyler Perry was Tyler Perry. Tell me about this. Oh, I was living in Atlanta and I had taken my skills of art and I used to travel on the bus with the, uh, a, a baby carriage that I converted into a cart to go back and forth and loaded it down with easels and drawings and, and, and a portfolio. I mean, always ready. And I would be seen throughout the city just sitting up drawing outdoors what they call in plein air any scenery that I wanted to and I happen to be doing the varsity off in uh, I think it's 14th street in Atlanta Georgia and there's a, a ramp that comes up from the varsity from 7585 you get off at that ramp at, on 14th street and the varsity is right there and I had a conversation with Tyler Perry and he was telling me at the time being that he had a previous show at the, um, not baby grand we're in Atlanta. It was called the Fox theater okay. and it didn't, it, it didn't succeed at first. And he had to regroup and recoup some monies to do this again. And 
Uh, he was dressed as a homeless person collecting money as people came up the ramp and asked him for monies and so and so. And he would make quite a bit of money all day long, but you would never know it because I guess that was one of his greatest acting roles then. Um, uh, then he would be seen downtown doing the same thing. I could, I bumped into him quite often. Mm. And then they, in, in Atlanta, they have a club called the Q's. Uh, where they uh, Omega, uh, I'm not gonna try to define it because I don't know, but anyway, the Q and Signa they had a club in Camelton and he would come through there. And that night, he would be all dressed up. <laughs> oh my, I was gonna be like, This is a twist from what I seen earlier today. And he was meeting all the great people, all the high pollutant members that were there and uh, he was doing everything that he needed to do to keep ra raising his funding so that he could have another successful play at the uh, Fox Theater. Wow. And I was just shocked at the time being that uh, he could transform so many different ways. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, but he's great at what he does. Can't take yes. that away from him. He is great at what he does. And I knew he was he was comical then, you know, uh, seeing him in the mornings, uh, uh, early in the mornings downtown uh, with a cup of coffee in his hand, me with a cup of coffee. Uh, we, we, we chopped it up quite a bit. I had no idea that I was talking to somebody who was going to become so famous. Hmm. Well, you never know. That's why you always have to be careful about how you treat people. You know, you just don't know. Yes. You just don't know. You don't know who you're talking to, you know? You don't know. And it's good just to be a good human person, you know, a good human being. Wow. So, Mr. I Caleb Sims, I mean, go ahead. You were going to say something? I look forward to him one day reaching out to me and saying, I've been looking for you because I, I think that the time being that I seen him uh, when I was painting the varsity, I was doing a painting of uh, watercolor of the uh, Coca-Cola buildings uh, along 14th Street. That was a very prominent area and whatnot, but uh, I, he will probably remember me. Well, I don't think it'll be easy to forget you, Mr. K.O. Sims. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I doubt it very seriously. You know, if you had any suggestions to anyone, because being an artist is something of a love. It's, it's, a, it's something that you really just, it's in you. You can't give it up, no matter how absurd or how many people think it's bad or you'll, I mean, you know how many times I've heard, you're never going to make a living doing what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that is one of the largest lies that's ever been told. Yes, I know. Because the, the art industry is making the visual art industry is making so much money. Uh, it's a shame that Basquat is not alive right now when one of his, uh, paintings just recently was auctioned off for 98 million dollars oh my gosh yes yes oh my god and uh um but if i had to give any advice to anyone be continuously dedicated to uh doing your art without contrasting yourself with anyone else you know um don't don't feel like you're in competition just discover you um, I never wanted to go to college to read about all the famous history, historic artists because I wanted to discover who I was. And I seem to have graduated from doing the pen and inks to now doing impressionist acrylic palette knife work. And I was often fond of the impressionists from the European era. Mm. So now I'm doing my version of the impressionist work with a palette knife. Uh, capturing things here in the United States. Wow. Wow. You know, it's just so amazing. There's so much work for artists, like you said, nowadays. And and getting things out there is so much easier, you know, especially on social media. Do you have a social media page that someone can follow you on? Uh, yes. The social page is K.O. Sims simspixels.com and I'm also on Facebook at KO Sims Fine Arts Facebook.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well we'll make sure that people have that in the description box. And if not, they can just go to your website. 
which is yes, I, I, QR code is on the corner right there. <laughs> you know, when I grew up, I always was looking in encyclopedias and, and things for anybody with my last name or anybody black that was doing art. And I am so delighted that time has afforded me entry into Google search. So when people hit the just search my name, KO Sims, it pops up no matter where you are in the world. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, congratulations on everything. I hope the King and Queen of Sweden is watching. And I do so hope that your painting is still in the hallways as they walk by and they can say, you know, this painting is by KO Sims. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. Not only that, yo, Tyler, get in contact with them. His website's in the corner, right there on the QR code. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mr. Sims, thank you so much for joining us today. It's just been such a pleasure. And you're such an amazing artist. And I, I mean, you know, if people want to contact you, they know how now. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for guys. having me. No problem. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until the next episode, which will be soon, be blessed. Thank you.